Hello, in this presentation, we will record short-term investment deposit in QuickBooks Pro 2018. In other words, we have an investment that has become due and therefore we're transferring it out of the investment asset account and into the check-in account. If you have been working along with us, we will be continuing along with the Get Great Guitars. If not, that is okay. We will be recording this transaction, transferring an asset that has become due in terms of a short-term investment from the assets to the checking account. We currently have the home, home page open, which you can find at Company and Home Page. If you have the backup file, you can restore that backup file to this point at the file and... Uh, restore the backup file it's good to have the same point in time the backup file will provide that or if you've been working through the problem to be at a similar point in time so that we can start here and move forward however if you don't have access to that or if you're looking at a different file that's okay we can go through this setup and get the most out of this setup note that we do have the open windows not open over here we're going to select open windows by selecting the view page and open window list. Now we have the open window list only being the home page at this time. Our goal here, the objective, is to convert a short term investment that has become due and now we are receiving uh, the deposit from that. So we're going to scroll over and take a look at where that short term investment is and then record the uh, expiration of that short term investment, decreasing the assets and putting it on the books in cash as the cash has been received for it in the checking account to do that we will take a look at the balance sheet so we're going to go to reports up top we're going to scroll down we're going to go to company and financial then we're going to scroll down to the balance sheet we're going to change the date range up top so when we drill down on the data it will have a range so we're going to customize and the date range is going to be 0101 one we are working in in uh, 2021 starting with january 1st 2021 to 12 31 21 there's our date range we're going to say okay looking at our balance sheet we see the short-term investment right here at the 12,000. what we're going to say is that short-term investment has become due and we've received that 12,000 plus interest of another 250. 12,000 plus the 250 then is what we are going to need to record in terms of a bank deposit and we're going to have to in, into our checking account and we're going to have to reduce this amount to zero it having been expired at this point and we're going to have to do something with the difference that will be uh, interest revenue some form of interest income interest revenue a couple of ways we could do this we could go to the short term investment register and record that transaction there we could go to the journal entries. We could record this as a journal entry by going to the company up top and make journal entry. If we were to do it that way, we would debit uh, the checking account. We would, uh, for the amount that was deposited, 12250 credit the short-term investment, and then credit the $250 uh, to the interest revenue. However, it might be the easiest thing to do would be to go into the uh, check register and record this as a deposit directly into the check register and use the check register to split those accounts and thereby not really needing to know debits and credits as we record this so let's take a look at that option we're going to go to the banking drop down we're going to the use register and we're going to keep the check register as the register we will be using and say okay The date of this transaction is going to be 020621. So to uh, February 6, 2021, the, the check is not going to be correct. We do not want to check there. What we want is a deposit. I'm going to show that by just typing in DEP just to eliminate the check number. So when we write another check within uh, this field, the correct check number will pop up. And we don't have a check now, but this is just going to be an implication that this is going to be a deposit entered directly into the check register. Next, we're going to say uh, Chase is the investment that we had in. That's going to be our bank. We also had, we're going to say that this investment was with Chase, like a CD or short-term investment. We're going to say tab, tab, 
and we want to make sure that we are in the deposit screen not the check screen we're increasing this is the deposit side not the payment side and we're going to enter the 12 250 there and tab now we need an account now we only have the one account here again we need two accounts in order to record this one we need to record the decrease of the 12,000 investment originally and we need to record the 250 of interest revenue so in order to do that we're going to select the split item here that'll give us our, our accounts that we can select one's going to be the short-term investment that needs to go down to zero but only for the 12,000 the difference then needs to be going to some type of interest revenue so we don't have interest income it looks like from the accounts that were set up originally when we set up these accounts through quickbooks quickbooks generated this chart of accounts using uh the manufacturer or not the manufacturer the merchandising setup we could put it into uncategorized but it might be more specific for us to put it into an account called interest expense so we're going to say interest uh interest revenue or interest income i should say income i'm going to type in interest income it's going to be a new account so when we select tab it's going to say we don't have this set up tab uh interest income is not in the account list we're going to go ahead and set that up then setting up the new account now it's going to default to expense when we enter something into the check register and that's not what we want we want it to be income so we're going to say drop down and we're going to look for income account and we want it in other current income to be more specific it's not normal our normal income operations we don't typically get most of our income from interest uh, and therefore we're going to put it into the other income selection everything else will remain the same and we're going to say save and close there we have the item so the 12,250 that's going to be the increase to the checking account the two other accounts affected decreasing the short-term investment decreasing the interest income let's go ahead and record that and then take a look at the impact on the financial statements going back over here to the balance sheet we're going to select the balance sheet and see if it does what we would think it to do we should have a uh, increase in the checking account for the amount so we're going to double click on the checking account and we have an increase in the checking account for here it is it's not quite at the bottom because we entered that last one a little bit out of order in the date range so we have the 26 here it's the 12,250 that we increased in the checking account if we double click on that it goes to a deposit screen note that uh, we entered it directly into the check register but when quickbooks looks at a deposit this is the driving form so it's going to go to the deposit screen there we can close that out uh, just to verify that it is the same transaction we can look at the uh, checking check register in the open windows items and we can see that we do have that amount uh, here as well if we were to double click on this little dep we would get to that same driving form that deposit form so there is that back to the balance sheet so there's the balance sheet side let's take a look at the profit and loss side by going to reports up top drop down we're going to go to company and financial we're going to take a look at the profit and loss changing the date range to the dates we are working in 010117 to uh not 17 010121 january 1st 2021 to 12 31 21 december 31st 2021 looking for the other side of this transaction in terms of the interest so we should have an other income notice not in the income section because it's going to be other income it's not part of our normal operations and the point of that is to say if we were to present this or read this financial statements we're saying this is the net income of our normal operations and or loss in this case and this is the stuff that doesn't normally happen we don't typically our business is not the business of investing our business is the business of buying and selling guitars but we had this other income related to it when we look at our normal operations you want to take a look at this number when you want to look at all the normal operations plus the other things that have happened that are outside the norm then th that's going to include the interest income if we double click on that we see the interest income here 
And if we double click on that, we of course see that deposit slip once again. Closing this out, closing this out. Last piece of it, if we go back to the balance sheet, you would think would be on the balance sheet showing a zero for that investment account. However, it's not here. Why isn't it here? Because it is zero and therefore not showing on the balance sheet. If we want to take a look at it, make sure that that uh, account was impacted, that it is indeed zero and it was affected by that journal entry. We can go to the lists and go to chart of accounts. And then if we go find that account, it's going to be an other current asset or some type of asset that we, it was a short term asset. Yeah, other current type asset. It is at zero. If we double click on it, we'll see the check register. Here's the register. And we see that 12,000 bringing it down. If we look at that deposit, double clicking on the deposit, we'll then get back to that deposit sheet. So that's the, that's the recording of uh, a, uh, investment that has become due. We've received the deposit. Oftentimes, we see this on our bank statement where we have this deposit, in this case, for $12,250. And uh, we then need to decide, well, how are we going to record that? Because one of our investments then must have become due. And we're going to have to record that increase in our checking account and the decrease in uh, the investment account as well as the related interest or type of, in, of uh, earnings that happen, probably interest or dividends.